Okay, excellent. Well, thank you all for coming to this session. I really thought it was going to be me and fellow OSM board members. Maybe that. <laughs> all right, it's nice to see OSM board members here uh, as well. Uh, as you might know, uh, my name is Ryan Osmick. I'm the president of Open Source Matters, and I'm here to deliver the state of OSM. Woo! Yay! Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Cheers. Um, yeah, so first I just want to say that this is really awesome to be able to do something like this at uh, JM Beyond at a Joomla event that's international rather than maybe at a, a Joomla day because I think it's a good opportunity to get, uh, you know, the connections from folks from across the community around the world uh, to be hearing what's going on and, and part of what we're doing in OSM these days is trying to be more transparent, more accountable and finding new ways to empower people in the community to, to help us out and in turn help out the community. So being able to talk to you guys here at an event like this that's so international uh, is awesome. So many thanks to Robert and Alex and Jeremy and everybody else who's been helping out on this event. So thank you very much. Uh, oh, I can't lock this, okay. Um, okay, so just briefly, real quick, uh, my very short background. Uh, president of OSM and when I'm not president I run a uh, small web development firm for nonprofit organizations so I keep myself traveling around quite a bit for folks that may have seen uh, on Twitter I've been an OSM board member for gosh four years now uh, I think I'm the oldest guy on the board with the exception of um, our general counsel James Vazil who's been there since uh, almost the very beginning so I've been around for a while uh, today I'm going to be giving you an update as to what's been happening in 2010 but on Sunday, I'm going to be giving a little bit of a presentation talking about just my general lessons learned from uh, Joomla leadership, from everything that I've seen over the course of the past four years, and give you guys a little bit of insight as to what happens in Joomla leadership world from my own perspective, that is. Um, so people have often asked me why I'm so passionate about open source software, why I spend so much time on the road, and why I'm very interested in what we're doing in the Joomla world. So just a very brief story. Um, back in 1999, I had finished university uh, down in Los Angeles in California, uh, and I was doing what a lot of uh, college students do, which is hop off to Europe and travel around for about four weeks, six weeks or so. And while I was doing that, one of my good friends, uh, Gray Franzen, uh, was saving the world. He was in a much more difficult place. Uh, he was in Kosovo and in uh, Albania during the Kosovo Wars in 99 uh, and early uh, 2000. Uh, and he said, Ryan, uh, I need you to get down to Italy to hop on a plane to come see what's going on here. Uh, we could really uh, use your, your thoughts as to how technology could help out uh, these folks that are being caught in a really, really bad situation. Uh, so I made my way down there, hopped on over on this small kind of biplane uh, on my way over to uh, Kosovo, landed there, and all I saw, as far as the eye could see, was just tent after tent of refugees, families, children, uh, people that were ill, the elderly that have had to flee Kosovo and make their way into uh, Tirana and outside of Al uh, Tirana and Albania. Uh, so Gray said, Ryan, you've been doing a lot of technology work. Is there some way that we can be using this open source software to help out organizations that could really use this stuff? And I said, well, I'm sure we could you know, think of stuff. Let's, let's see what we can do. So I hopped back on a plane, made my way back over to the US, and uh, was down at uh, UCLA again. Two months after I got back to school in Los Angeles, I read on the news, on CNN, uh, that this plane that fit about 20 people uh, had crashed full of do-gooders people that gave their lives to help other people that had a much, much worse situation. And I thought, if I had an opportunity to be in some plush apartment, not so plush, in a nice apartment in Los Angeles, and I had some technology skills, and I had a passion for helping out organizations, this is my time to step up and get to work. And if we could use open source software to help out organizations and to make a difference and to really help people that are struggling in this world, uh, that would be incredible. Uh, so I just say, and I say this a lot in my presentations, uh, I'm very passionate about what I'm doing and I'm not here necessarily just to run a business. I'm not here necessarily just to get a, an ego trip from being able to stand outside in this beautiful weather. Uh, I'm very, very passionate about helping out organizations and helping those that just don't have the money or the resources uh, to do the kinds of things we're lucky enough to do. So I just hope that by the end of these three days, you've had enough opportunity to talk to other folks and find out what that passion is for you 
to bring that back to your countries, your cities, and your organizations and, and help us out because open source is really a great way uh, to contribute and, and give back to the world. Um, but it's not just me. I'm lucky enough to have nine other passionate OSM board members here at JMV on. OSM board members, raise your hands. Thank you guys for, for coming. This is great. Uh, so we're all here. We're all very passionate about what we do. And it's interesting because in the past, a lot of people had said, oh, OSM, OSM is a place where leadership team members go to retire. <laughs> it was like, just send them out to pasture. They're done. Go to OSM. We're just going to relax. Uh, I, I think that my fellow OSM board members could say that's the farthest from the truth. Or is that what's happening? Yeah, look at Javier. That's a daily, just people relaxing all the time. Um, so that's not really what's happening. Um, what I found really is that OSM has some of the brightest, hardest working, and most passionate people in the project. And I am so privileged to have an opportunity to work with all you guys. So I really appreciate you guys being here and for working so hard to help out the community. So things that you don't hear on new OSM board members is, man, I am so bored. This retirement life is great. Things that you hear instead I've heard multiple times is, I never knew how hard this would be, and if I knew how hard it was, I might not have taken your positions. <laughs> um, but people are working really hard to, to make this happen. Um, externally, I haven't been part of a community that actually cares that more than just fellow OSM board members would show up to something like this, or be passionate enough to be writing about the 2011 budget. Like people actually were submitting comments and had ideas. Like that's that's awesome. I've been a part of many nonprofit boards that nobody shows up. Half the board members don't even show up. Uh, so it's great to be part of a community that really cares about what we're doing as well. Um, so a couple of things. 2011 really marks a year for OSM to have some pretty incredible opportunities. And note. I'm really trying to focus on just OSM. I have many Joomla project ideas as well, but I'm gonna focus on just what's happening uh, in the OSM world. Um, first, as we know, the, the structure of the project, the focus on a new framework or continuing to move on the framework as well as a CMS at the same time gives us a lot of opportunities to be thinking about ways in which we as uh, folks that are managing the legal um, assets of the project need to keep that in mind and help out our leadership. Uh, the release cycles are changing, obviously. So the timing and the ways in which OSM from a financial side, a legal side, an event side, a marketing side, how are we going to change pace with them to make sure that we're doing our best to help out the project and getting the word out there. Uh, and finally, we're seeing a huge pickup in interest, not just from the small business and the mid-sized business community, but as well as like enterprise businesses that folks from Microsoft, eBay, and other larger corporations are here today shows that we as a community have pretty, uh, have matured quite a bit. And I think all of us on the OSM board that are helping manage, again, the legal assets and the financial aspects of the project, take that very seriously and recognize uh, the duty that we have to really help out and make sure that we're doing our best for the community first, and then for enterprise businesses next. Um, so I just want to say, I, I have to do this. This is the name of the title of my presentation. Um, ladies and gentlemen of the Joomla community, knights of open source software, and distinguished guests, uh, while we're always raising the bar and trying to do new things, I'm happy to say and let it be known that the state of your OSM is strong. <laughs> All right, so I have, thank you, uh, so a, a brief overview. I just quickly want to talk to you guys about the, the purpose of OSM, so people that don't know what I'm talking about can have a better idea of it. Um, our 2010 uh, and beyond vision, what we talked about uh, in March of 2010 and where we've been going in terms of vision. Uh, our goals for 2010, and more importantly, did we meet those goals? What were the measures of our success, and were we successful in doing them, and what work do we still have to do? Uh, and then our goals for 2011. Uh, I, I love to be part of this goal-setting team because we've been through the process of saying, what do we want to do for 2011? And I think we're going to be rolling into 2012 with new ideas as well. Uh, and then finally, uh, the reason why this is, uh, well, less of a semicircle now, but I'd really like to make sure that at the end, we have all the OSM board members come up here. I do a brief introduction for you guys, and then we want to hear input from you based on what you've heard from our vision for the year. What are ways you'd want to contribute? What are some questions that you have that we could be doing better? And we're here to, to listen. 
like maybe I'll be pontificating for another 30 minutes or so or 25 minutes or so, uh, but we want to really hear back from you guys as well. We're more than uh, accessible and available for you guys the entire weekend, so please make sure to come up and talk to us as well. Okay, so just very briefly, purpose of OSM. We provide, obviously, the legal support and guidance to the project, maintaining the assets of the project from the trademark uh, and the copyright. Uh, second, we provide the fiscal overview of the project. Um, this means uh, leadership from Paul Orwig, our treasurer, and others to set the budget for uh, each year of the project. I'm happy to say that that was passed not too long ago. Um, third, um, We'd provide leadership over events. Uh, Robert Deutz, who's obviously done a great job here, is also the leader of our events team and is helping make sure we have great events going on around the world. Uh, and then finally, we provide uh, marketing and public relations uh, support to the project as well. Uh, we're always looking for people that want to do communications, want to put uh, marketing materials and white papers together. So if you have those skills or if you're interested in that, definitely let us know. So 2010, that was a fun year, an interesting year for the board members. In fact, how many new board members did we pick up? Who here is a new board member from 2010? Like, let's say March of 2010. And then, is there anybody here who's a board member that came on before March of 2010? That's the kind of change that we had. I'm the only person here that was a board member prior to March of 2010. The board has almost completely shifted. I think it's about 89% or 92% turnover rate on the board. Uh, I think that gives us uh, signs of a mature board because we were able to do that. We had some learning lessons along the way, uh, but we were able to do it with uh, some good success as well. Um, what we wanted to do, uh, duh, duh, no, lost in place here. Uh, we've had three key components to our vision for 2010. And some of you have heard this before, but I'm going to say it again because it's moving on to 2011. We believe in transparency. We want to make sure that folks can have bright lights shined on the work that we're doing, and you can have a clear understanding of, of what we're doing and, and how we're delivering uh, service um, efforts back to the project. And if you ever feel that we're not doing a good job, we are the kinds of people that say, hey, let us know, and we're here to do it even better. Second, uh, accountability. We really believe that as members of Open Source Matters with fiduciary responsibilities as stewards of the project's assets that we need to be held accountable by the community. We do that through board meeting minutes. We do that by really good things, I think, by providing the community a budget before we ratify it so you guys can review it, comment on it, and let us know your feedback on it, and then we pass it. Finally, empowerment, and this is where you guys come into it. We want to make sure that everybody in the community has an opportunity, if they want to, come to the OSM door and say, I'm here to help. What can I do? We want to make sure that we're providing roles, responsibilities, guidance, documentation, things that are necessary so that we can make ourselves obsolete. So the next generation of board members can come. And when there is a 90% turnover again at some point in time, it's not going to be because I was president that we need to continue on. Anybody else should be able to pick up a shovel and help us move forward after we pass along. So our goals for 2010. Uh, we're looking to more effectively document what we were doing. We wanted to build roles and responsibilities. That's, I know it sounds funny. This is an organization. You think that you'd actually have roles and responsibilities. Well, we wanted to make sure we, we had those documented. Uh, we wanted to end the year net positive from a fiscal point of view. We wanted to make sure we brought in new funding to the project without wholesale selling out the project for the highest bidder. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we had a more balanced representation on the board, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. We wanted to make sure that we built a larger board that could manage all the important responsibilities that we were doing. And we also wanted to make sure that we had a president that could get on the road and come to events like this and to do the evangelism and the work we need to do to do marketing, outreach, and connections with our community members. So how did we do is the question. And OSM board members don't have to hide because I think we actually did a pretty darn good job in 2010. Uh, first of all, more effectively documenting what we're doing. Um, we went through a four and a half, maybe five month process with a pro bono but um, um, professional uh, uh, organizing organizer consultant, consulting organizer, 
I always get it wrong. Someone to come in and help us out, make sure that we're doing things the right way, that we're organized in a way that can be most effective for the community. We went through a survey asking leadership, what can we do better? We asked ourselves, what are the kinds of responsibilities that we should be taking on? Uh, we went to the community and said, hey, these are the things we're looking to do. What do you think? Uh, that was a really long, uh, sometimes tough process. But as an entire board, we went through that. I think we were pretty successful in documenting out what we needed to do. Uh, we also made sure that uh, we cleaned up our appointment process so it would be easy for new board members to come on board and we can select new people to come on to the staff or staff to the board. Um, we had a lot of folks uh, leave the board at the same time or at the end of uh, or the beginning of this last year. So we want to make sure there was an easy way to, to show people, uh, thank you for helping out, let's document what you've been doing and then move on to the next generation of board members. And then finally, uh, we didn't really have a great documenting system. So we wanted to find a way to do some better documentation. Uh, we made some good progress on that. Thanks to Kyle Ledbetter and the folks uh, that had helped out with Project Forked, we were able to do a really good job in starting the process of project documentation. Uh, we also wanted to find a way to end 2010 uh, net positive. What's that mean? So we wanted to find ways to obviously increase, uh, increase revenues uh, and decrease expenses. Let me give you some numbers. Now, unfortunately, the internet connection wasn't so great, so I wasn't able to get uh, fiscal year 2010 numbers to the very end. But from the end of November of last year, let's compare 2009 to 2010. Income in 2009 was $191,000. This is all US dollars. Income in 2010, $264,000. That's a one year 38% increase and up $72,000 in one year. What about expenses? We gotta bring the expenses down too, right? People know that we had some, uh, some legal uh, trademark um, um, processes that we needed to go through. We had some legal expenses to pay. In addition, we also had uh, developer consultants that were being paid at the end of 2010 or the middle of 2010. So those are two big expenses that we had. In 2009, our total expenses were $209,000. In 2010, $187,000. That's a net change negative of $22,000 or our expenses went down 11, 11%. So just to, to recognize what that all means, in 2009, we had a loss of $17,000. And in one year, in one year, this new board turned that around to a $77,000 profit for the project. Now, that doesn't mean that we all got Mercedes Benz or we're now driving around in fancy new cars. It does mean that we're able to invest that money, put it into our reserve funds, and make sure that the project has a long standing reserve ready to move forward in the future. Uh, in fact, I think I have it a little later. The current number of cash that we have in the bank right now is near $120,000. That's the highest I've ever seen it in the project. It's the healthiest uh, budget sheet I've ever seen. And I'm really, really thankful for Paul Orwig, who I don't think is here right now, um, and other members of the board that have helped us find ways to cut back expenses, increase our revenues, to do so without putting the project at legal risk, and to do so without selling ourselves out to the highest bidder. I think that's awesome. If I'd really, I don't know if Paul can hear us, but I'd really like to thank him for his hard work. So uh, increasing funds is obviously really critical to what we're doing. Uh, so how did we do that? Uh, one, we had a sponsorship process that we started to create back at the end of 2008, beginning of 2009. I helped put that together, but uh, is Phil here? Phil? Uh, Phil really did a great job of starting the process of building a capital committee team again. Uh, and it was great to see new money coming in from sponsorships. Uh, not only sponsorships, we've seen a big uptick in PayPal, we can't call it donations, but little PayPal button sponsorships that have been bringing in the five, the 10, the $50 to the project that have been helping us increase our revenues. Um, and one other thing from a tax perspective, uh, we made a change in the type of uh, nonprofit organization we are to better classify exactly what we're doing rather than a charitable organization where a, um, a New York State nonprofit charity but of a certain type essentially saved us about twenty thousand plus dollars just in tax payments tax expenses that we had to pay because we had incorrectly filed the first time around pretty cool uh, more balanced representation on the board what do I mean by that um, about a year and a half ago I wrote a post on the leadership list 
saying, you know what, if I look around the board, we don't have much diversity here. We've got a lot of North Americans and to be honest, a lot of white men. And I said, it would be great if we could have geographic diversity, if we could have gender diversity, and if we could just have general background diversity, especially in a worldwide project like this that has significant numbers of women that were underrepresented on the board, as well as people um, from countries outside of North America, um, Africa to Europe to Asia to North America. Uh, it was really important for me to see that we move forward on that. Uh, I'm happy to say uh, that now, if you look at the I think the nonprofit statistic is the number of women in, le in leadership positions of open source projects is something like 2% or 3% is the number of women that are in these leadership uh, positions. I believe in OSM we're now over 30% or 28% I think it is of, uh, of the board member makeup is women on our board and I think that's fabulous. I also think it's fabulous that we have board members from Thailand and Mongolia that are on our board as well, places that we, did, we just simply didn't have members before. To get that geographic diversity, I think is really critical for a project like us. Uh, we also wanted to make sure that we grew our board so we could take on all the different responsibilities that we had. Uh, in 2010, we had 13 new additions to the board. Uh, we also had five departures, but we had 13 new additions. And even with that change, we were still able to do a good job to make sure we balanced our budget, we did better than that, we brought in a profit, and we made sure to keep the legal assets of the project nice and good, you know, nice and safe. One other thing, uh, we wanted to make sure that we could get our president on the road to be a leading evangelist of the project. Uh, in 2010, I went to London, Atlanta, Brazil, Germany, Vermont, Dallas, Texas, San Jose, Washington, New York, New York, Ipswich, UK, San Francisco, all at a total cost to the community of zero dollars. And it's zero dollars because we have amazing sponsors that have been helping the community out by sponsoring my travels for Joomla days, other Joomla related events. So just a quick round of applause for our sponsors. So in 2010, I was able to visit three continents five or six different countries at 12 events. That was for the entirety of 2010. It is what, May 7th, May 8th? I don't even know what day it is. Six, okay. It's May 6th. We're four, a little more than four months into the year. Last year, three continents, five countries, 12 events. This year, three continents, seven countries, and nine events already. And that's because we have sponsors that really support our project and people that say, we want to have leadership at these events, be them Joomla events or otherwise. Uh, so I'm very grateful and thankful to our sponsors that have given us that opportunity to get me out in the road and doing this. And thankful for the community that invites me <laughs> to have an opportunity to, to talk to them as well. Goals for 2011. We did a good job in 2010. I think we did. 2011, what are we going to do? We've been talking about this for a while. We're a board that uh, takes our time in deliberating, uh, but when we do so, we've got some really good ideas. Here's what we're thinking about for 2011, and let's keep this in mind as we go to the last third of the session, that we wanna hear your feedback, hear what you think about these goals, what changes you think of them, and maybe other things that we should be adding on to our list. First of all, uh, an increase of revenues uh, from sponsorships, the shop, website monetization opportunities and, and other. Luckily, I have the shop manager, Diane, here, and I have our capital committee, committee leader, Phil, here. Can you two of you stand up? And can Diane, uh, the question for you guys is, what are the kinds of things that you'd like to do with that goal in mind of increasing revenue for, for the shop and increasing revenue for sponsorships and website monetization opportunities? You guys get to choose who goes first. Oh goody. Um, 
different products just to bring them in and um, to try to create a little more interest for the Joomla brand and for what you guys all want. So um, very quickly we'll be doing that. I'll be back home after a week and I will have finally got some time to put this all together and hopefully we should have a new shop up within a couple of weeks by the end of this month. So voila. Okay, um, a big one because it's where all the money comes from or a large majority of the money comes from um, but one thing uh, I've been working on which is very successful which is uh, building a team and that's going to be sort of like finalized over the next uh, coming week or so um, now that team is uh, going to be putting together something for the community to come back and say great idea or bad idea or why don't you do this um, but it looks like uh, I mean I've actually brought in eighteen thousand dollars over the last couple of weeks uh, from two sponsors um, it looks like the money is going to go through the roof. We've got all this money, all right, but legal has gone down, expenditure. Um, so what should we do with this money? Um, should we be helping out Joomla events, etc.? We don't know. We're going to come to the community with a list of bullet points and say, hey, we think this is what we should do. What do you guys think? You might poo-poo a couple of them. You might say, yeah, fantastic. But, uh, you know, we, we want to get a list of things because it potentially we've got a lot of money coming in over the next 12 months especially. Um, so I will be coming to you, knocking on your doors. Yeah, um, trademark is one of those topics that that people love to hate in the in the Joomla community. Um, uh, through the years, there's been lots of frustrations and and misunderstandings and dramas and things that involves the trademark. The trademark is one of our, our most uh, valuable assets, um, so it is something that that we as OSM also have to look after, but. All of us can also see that that how things are currently working is is it's not working well. It's it's a frustrating process. It's a slow process. It's uh, unclear what the rules are. Um, so so part of the goals is to first expand the trademark team. So if there's anyone that wants to volunteer to to be part of that team to help out there, so that we can spread the work and and get things done faster, then then you're welcome to speak to me. And another aspect is to implement uh, ticketing software that hopefully we will start doing quite soon. Um, the ticketing software will be so that it would be easier to see where in the process the application is, uh, who is dealing with the process, where, where something is going wrong in the process, who, who should we speak to. Um, and along with that, uh, a, a, a bigger project where, where everyone's input would be appreciated also is to the, have the information on our website just displayed in a much simpler, easier to understand way so that there's not different versions of, of what the rules are and so that it's as simple as Drupal, as uh, Android, as all those organizations make their one, one page of rules. Uh, yeah, so that we spend less time on arguing about trademarks and, and more time on coding and supporting Joomla. Yeah. If you could hand that mic over to Robert. Robert, one of the goals I think that you created, and you might know something about, is establish Joomla Continental Conferences. I know, it's, it, that's from Steve. It's okay. not from me. Okay. So. Okay. You're our events leader. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have to do it. So see, see, idea, and I have to do it. So, um, yeah, um, I think we um, uh, we're trying to uh, make more bigger conferences. Uh, it's always um, complicated to 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 uh, if you if you do a big conference um, to find something uh, to make this conference special. So I think we achieved this goal with with Jane Beyond to make it, uh, have a, a, a special idea what what this uh, conference is. Um, but um, for for a world conference, we tried this one, um, but uh, I think we we choose the uh, wrong place and uh, uh, we were not very clear what we are doing. So and uh, in the next year, I think we will um, make two big uh, conferences: one Jane Beyond. 
I don't know where. Uh, and uh, I think we would try to make a world conference, but we I don't know really um, what is uh, um, what is the difference to to a, to a normal Joomla day. So um, that's what we do um, um, in the next next months. And uh, I think we we're forming um, um, a events team. Uh, a working events team. We have a events team, but uh, that oh, I don't. I don't think it, it works at uh, some point in, in the past. So, awesome. okay. Hand the mic back over to Phil as well. Phil. Okay. Thing on here, we have a goal that says uh, establish a Joomla supporters club. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know you're supposed to do that? Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, okay, it's uh, it, it's it's something pretty new that we're going to be bringing to the community um, which um, we're hoping to get feedback again from the community um, which is to get more money in the door uh, and by that um, it's going to be um, individuals companies businesses organizations whatever supporting Joomla okay and you actually get recognition for that how at this moment in time we don't know we haven't put this down on paper um, you know whether you get a badge for your site or you get links on the Joomla property or we, we just don't know um, but it's something that we've actually been asked for um, and something that I personally want um, so it is something we're going to push out there and see what everybody thinks thank you and I know that uh, we've got two more goals I'll just say them real quick one of them is Steve's Steve Burgess and the other one is mine uh, Steve uh, was looking for ways as one of our he's our communications liaison essentially one of the communication leaders of the project um, improving public relations and promotions efforts uh, to raise positive global awareness about the value of Joomla uh, so I've been doing my best through an evangelist point of view, getting on the road, meeting people in person, talking about things to the community. Um, Steve's also looking at leveraging our resources with the public relations team that we work with. That's been doing a really good job helping us get in publications from Mashable to Wired Magazine, or not Wired Magazine, um, PC Mag, PC World, I think, and some others. That's been great. Um, one other goal that uh, I've had is continuing the simplification and the documentation of the kinds of processes that we do. We do a lot, a lot, a lot of things. And we're all volunteers and all of us have jobs, families, other things that we would like to be doing as well. So the more documentation we have, the easier it is to just say, do this task, get through it, gives us more time to be creative in thinking about what's the next way that we can help the project raise money, what's the way in which we can help businesses in our community <laughs> understand the trademark process and to make sure we're processing things more effectively. Uh, okay, so this is where I asked all the OSM board members to come up here. You have to actually come up, sorry. I know it's nice in the shade. Okay. And a couple over there too. You thought you could hide, sorry. Exactly. All right. So for everybody here, if you've ever wanted to contribute your talents to OSM, be it financial, legal, events, marketing, anything, this is the time to do it right now. We need you. You're the future of the success. Just pick up a shovel, okay? We got a lot of great things that we could use some help on. The barrier to entry for getting involved is you saying, yes, I want to help. We say, here's the shovel. Help us build this. This is your board. We're here for the community to take your questions even some of your criticism if you have it, uh, and to hear from you guys. And on behalf of the board, we really appreciate you guys giving us the time to talk to you today for your continued support of what we're doing in OSM and hopefully for your energy and volunteering time to help us make OSM even better. That's all I've got. Thank you. So I can be the game show host unless I'm being asked the question to let people ask questions. So who might have a question? Or I could just repeat the question. Oh, Vic has a question. Um, so it sounds like there's a big emphasis on um, What is it that um, we're raising? I mean, I'm all for creating revenue, and that's great, but you know, what's, the, what's the purpose? What's, what's the goal? I mean, increasing expenses, or decreasing expenses, all this good. Why are we trying to continually raise more money? The
question is, we're looking to increase revenue. Why would we want to do that? Phil, as our capital committee chair. Uh, what we've been doing in the past is raising money, spending a lot of money on legal. Uh, we've spent money on developers, contractors, etc., etc. That's now disappeared. Okay, but the money's still coming in. Okay, part of this eighteen thousand uh, dollars that I've got in over the last couple of weeks, I haven't gone out and found. They've come to me and they've said, "Love Joomla, want to give back." Um, so you know that's that's one thing that we've now got to look at. And you know, I'm coming back to the community with a blog post over the next week or so to say, "Hey, this is what we think we should be spending the money on." helping out Joomla days um, you know because you know organizing a Joomla event is hard work you know if we were to give you a thousand dollars and say hey there you go that's get you moving sort of thing um, I don't know but we, we you know we've got a list of a few um, ideas that you know this money that's coming in and putting in a bit of effort to get more money in you know we've got a list of bullets that we're gonna put out there to you guys and say do you agree are there other things um, you know, you might say, hey, we, we want this, um, you know, and we say, well, yeah, but it, it costs money. We're going to have to get a contractor in to do it. You know, we'll have the money there to do it. You know, the Joomla Supporters Club, you know, that's not just something that we're going to magic up and it's going to be there tomorrow. You know, that's going to take effort. We might have to pay for that. I don't know. But, um, you know, the money is coming in, uh, putting in effort, more money is going to come in. So it's down to the community. Hey, what should we spend it on? I don't, I don't have the answers right at this moment in time. I wonder if there might be any interest to, you know, go to the community, find out what what it wanted, and, and, and you know, by everyone off the whole community and target, you know, have a fundraising goal, for example. You know, why should we raise half a million dollars when there's, a, there's only interest in 50000 you know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you know, one, one thing that the community might come back and say is, hey, we want this. Okay, we need $75,000. Okay, we've got a target of three months. Let's try and do it somehow. Do it as a community. You know, I don't know. You know, that's why I'm going out there with a couple of ideas um, in the next week or so, uh, week or so, to try and get some feedback and say, hey, what do you guys want? You know, and then we can look at it and say, hey, we need this much money. Okay, we've got that in the pot, or no, we have to raise that. And then the community can actually help to do that. Yeah, Absolutely. Okay. Um, normally, is I it, it's. Oh yeah. The, the question is the question was. I hope I understand this correct. Um, uh, he will do a Joomla day, and you asked uh, how you get the money we spend for the Joomla days. So, uh, and how much it is. So, so it's it's normally five hundred dollars. We spend um, for each Joomla day. Um, but uh, if you if you uh, come in, in in profit, so then you had to, to to give it back. So it's it's um, it's only um, um, yeah, it's it's only if you are in trouble. So so but and and to give you some um, 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 safe base for for doing a Joomla day, so having some some money. So that's the normal. Wait. Okay. Good. Other questions? Just ask me, and I connect you to Paul. <laughs> yes. Just an idea. Uh, Robert is thinking about how to get uh, an idea for for a Joomla World Conference. Okay. You are thinking about how to spend all the money the project is getting. Um, <laughs> uh, I was thinking about. Doing a world <laughs> conference um, with the PLT, with the CLT, the documentation team, OSM, put the whole community in a plane, fly it somewhere, um, so that we can think about Joomla goals in the future all together. Um, and I think with some money, it could be a great event.
think that's a good one. That, so should I repeat? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, the idea was uh, making a world conference, put all the PLT, CLT, and all, all the leadership in uh, uh, not in one plane. It's, it's a t <laughs> if it. <laughs> <laughs> So maybe, so maybe we have we have some with with this racket and um, so and um, so and discuss the future of, of Joomlite one place with, with the community. Okay, next question. Oh, uh, you mentioned that last year you paid uh, turtles for some time. Um, I don't know if really louder. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pass the tough questions to me. Uh, so the oh, okay, yeah, no. So, so the question was: uh, He understands that last year we we paid developers to do some consulting work. Uh, is that something we're looking to do in the future? And maybe the other question is: um, You know, I, I think the how much is. I don't know what the how much. No. Okay. Right. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, that's a really good question. Um, I, I'll, I'll, I'll answer the second half first, or the first half second. I don't know. Um, what, would we do it again? I think the answer is I'm not sure we would do it again. Not because I don't think it was successful. I actually think the work of the people that were paid, which is Andrew Eddy and Louis Landry, uh, was actually pretty good. Um, and I really respect the work that they do. Um, I think that there's, if there would be something like that where we'd be paying for any sort of either development work or just consulting work in general, uh, we want to find a way to um, inform the community, to get feedback from the community, to let them know what we're doing before we take anything like that into consideration again. I think the chances of us doing something just like the way we did it before is extremely low, if not zero percent. Yes. Oh, did you? Oh, yes. So we talked about it, and uh, we um, we talked in a way that that if we will do it again, then you will do more specific. Um, um, what is the task they should be uh, done? So and then we pay for a specific task, but we um, should ask the community before. Uh, if the community can do this task, and if we don't find someone and it's an important task, then we would pay for it. So, but we would, uh, the way OSM is doing it is, is always asking the community and then finding another way if we can do it uh, not with the community or within the community. More like a lottery. lottery yeah. well, just to answer that, Vic, I mean, thanks to Kyle, we've now got Project Fork. We never had anything like that. We couldn't look after timelines. You know, and uh, uh, moving forward, you know, we're, we're going to be able to have a, you know, a proper project. We're going to be able to put a timeline there with tasks that have to be hit on certain dates, etc., etc. You know, and great. You know, we'll come out to the, the to the to the community with an RFQ and say, hey, tender for this. You know, it's not just going to be given to somebody who has been with the community for 30 years. You know, it's, it's, it's going to be, um, you know, tendered properly and it's going to be project managed properly. You know, we're going to have a proper scope, you know, because I'm getting all this money in. I just don't want it to be flitted out on anything, you know, because I'm, I'm just wasting my time. What is Yes, the question. Right. So the question. 
question is if we were looking to invest time into consultant uh, ser money, money into consulting services, uh, would we be interested in doing that in areas such as performance and security areas of the project? Um, to me, that, that sounds of interest. I don't think we've got to the point yet where we've said, here's the criteria by which we would make decisions, but that would be something that if you were to propose that, that we would take it on to, to talk about it and then make sure to get back to folks on that. I don't think that was, that wasn't essentially, wasn't something specific that we had already thought about looking into, but it would be another process where we go to the community, get feedback. We can't find those resources in the community. If the PLT thinks it's something that's useful from a development perspective moving forward on, they're the ones leading on the, the coding effort. We're the ones that can help put the financial resources behind it. And there was a, and there was a second of FOTUS's proposal, for the record. <laughs> Other questions? The gentleman in the red shirt. <laughs> oh, Alex. Time's up! Thank you for coming. <laughs> uh, does uh, does somebody who hasn't spoken want to answer that question? Javier? No. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody? Alice. I'll give it a try. There you go. So the question was, um, thank you very much. That OSM has performed quite well in the last year with processes and uh, structure and. Uh, committed folks communicating with the community and there are two other uh, leadership entities outside of OSM and uh, the question I think pertains to specifically to PLT and the CLT and how are we uh, COC and um, how do we create a, a spirit in the same <laughs> vein that we have going here and I think um, my motto is leadership by example is a is a really strong way to, um, I feel I'm very proud to stand with this group um, people who express themselves thoughtfully and respectfully in general and I think that that's a, a very important uh, way to proceed there are also some processes that are being put in place that have not been in place before and that takes some time and I, it's also uh, an opportunity to connect across the groups uh, in a way that's never been done before so I really think it's gonna happen it's already started um, and even though there's a certain amount of uh, we're all kind of separate just that's just the way it is we need each other and we need to know what each, each what each group is doing we need to cooperate. I think everybody feels it. And um, we're moving in that direction. I think uh, we have a joint summit on the calendar for the end of July. I'm looking forward to that as an opportunity to really build on uh, relationships and continuing as we have started here. And uh, that's my vision. <laughs> so, does it? Yes, please. Can I, 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 can I just add something to that? Um, I've been talking to a lot of people, and the one continuing theme that's been said around this whole entire weekend so far has been the community. 
And I think everybody here, we're all this community. We're this community. And I think the only way that we're going to move forward and plug the hole in the ship, if anybody was in the last session, um, is to come together again as a community and to treat each other with the respect of a community and work forward for one common goal. I think that Alice has done a lot of work, and she's being very quiet about it, but she's done a lot of work in focusing on building communications between our teams, which there's always been not necessarily uh, forced built walls, but just natural built walls, because we're all so busy in these teams, are working on a lot of different things, and those efforts to cross between the teams and do some cross-team communication and to have very clear channels of how to do that is something that I haven't seen done before and Alice is really leading that effort uh, really well. Um, so thank you, Alice, for doing that. Um, in addition to that, I don't think it's OSM's role, this is from my point of view, I don't think it's OSM's role to be the teacher and the other teams, the students of our behaviors. I think we can lead by example. We went through a four month professional organizational development process and one of the things that I learned as a takeaway from that is we can learn we can teach best by example rather than saying we're better than you you should be like us and the way that we've been trying to move forward in a way that I think is more collaborative is by building these communication channels by giving more opportunities for us to actually work together and the more we can do that I think the more natural that progression would be rather than saying we're better than you or you're better than us in certain things and so far I actually think it's it's moving in the right direction but that's def definitely taken as a goal I appreciate that oh, yes That's a good question. Phil, I don't think that uh, any money right now is... Yeah, yeah so uh, one, there, is, there is one organization that is a non-profit organization that has helped Joomla and OSM since its early beginnings in 2005, and that's the Software Freedom Law Center, which helps Joomla, Drupal, and a huge number of open source projects with Eben Moglin and on our team, James Vazil, and other legal assets and, and team members that help protect the assets of the Joomla project and other open source projects. Uh, we decided to make a $5,000 contribution to the SFLC, the Software Freedom Law Center, this year uh, to help and say thanks, but more importantly, say keep doing what you're doing because there's very few organizations, if any others, that are doing that really important work. And that drives right at the goals and mission of what we're doing as a team. Uh, other than that, uh, we don't. Um, I think we would all be interested and would entertain ideas. Again, I mean, it's all about the money coming in. Um, I mean, Paul all week's not here, he's in another session somewhere, the treasurer. But, um, you know, I, my personal opinion is I think we need to keep up, you know, a surplus there, you know, at the end of a financial year. Um, but, hey, if we raise enough money and you guys help us to do it, you know, there's no reason why if we go over, an, over a certain amount, why we can't give a percentage of that to a, you know, to a charity or charities or whatever. It's all about getting the money in, you know. So if we do end up with a surplus on top of our surplus, why not? And, absolutely. No, and you know, it, it'll look good. You know, Joomla's just supported this. Yeah, brilliant.
leadership of OSM, but you don't really have the can't like you know make them take leadership training or anything. But it should almost be a requirement if you're going to be a part of leadership somewhere that you know something about it and know how to do it well. And if the consultant is going to come in and you know, inform you how to do that, then that's something that all the organizations uh, in, in your life should have. To do. So the 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 question is essentially are other branches of Joomla leadership doing the kind of professional organizational development processes and having consultants or somebody else come in to help make sure we're doing the best we can and leading the project in the right direction? Essentially? Yeah. Essentially. So um, I don't think they're doing it in the way that we're doing it. We actually got really lucky. This was somebody that had come to me that was through a network that I happened to be part of in the nonprofit world. So it landed in our lap. It was really easy. This person just finished, got a PhD. So it was just, it was, the timing was impeccable. Um, I do know that uh, we have members of our open source community like Alan Gunn from Aspiration Tech and others who have actually worked with the production leadership team and the community leadership team in their joint summit they had in October of last year and was part of that process. He's somebody that has worked with a lot of other communities, Mozilla, Drupal, WordPress and others and has seen lots of things uh, and has been able to give his advice. Um, not necessarily going through the four-month process that we went through, uh, although I don't think um, any organization, um, I think any organization should consider something like that. Uh, we hope to lead by example, and I think it would be great if the other teams were able to do that as well. And this is the last, last question, unless anybody else has one. That's a great comment. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, everyone, for taking the time. We appreciate it. Thank you.